right, let's, let's talk about insurance. Uh, this is one very important part of our, of our marketplace. Uh, I used the uh, listed ones on the stock exchange as a barometer, and in the last few weeks you've seen significant volume in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the stock of WAPIC insurance, of linkage insurance, and continental insurance. You've seen some gains among these mid to small cap insurers. And when uh, volumes, hundreds of millions start moving on a daily basis, uh, I keep one permanent eye open and try to find out what's going on. Just as those uh, numbers, uh, figures were moving and those shares were moving on the stock exchange, the folks at Chapel Hill Denham uh, rolled out a multi, uh, several pages, about two dozen pages of report. Uh, I'm not sure I was able to read through all of them. So I brought one of them here to explain what this report titled Insurance uh, Recapitalization and consolidation. So I just remove, we just remove the and, I put it all consolidation. Which one? Uh, Tajiri Ibrahim is the head of research at Chapel Hill Denham. Good morning. Good morning. Very interesting report. Uh, uh, in summary, what, what, why was this report necessary? Okay, so there are two key factors that uh, in the make this report to be necessary. The first of them is what we have seen in the industry in terms of the exposure of capital of insurance uh, companies in the country to risk. That's the first. The second that we, we had in mind is around a look at even the capital level. When was the last time that the regulator bothered about revising or reviewing the capital levels of insurance companies in Nigeria? The it was. It was 10 years ago. Yeah, 2007, and just at the end of the bank consolidation. Exactly. So, and within the past 10 years, we've seen tremendous improvement in the size of the economy as Nigeria rose to become the largest economy in Africa. That speaks to a lot of factors around business expansion and other economic activities. So the level of risk that insurers are carrying in the economy has increased substantially. And you folks think there's a need for a recapitalization? That is a need for Direct that. question. Is there some a regulatory deals like we had or self-imposed? Okay, so it looks to be like both, but it is going to be more like regulatory driven. Because That's what you guys even, think. That is be. what we think it should be because even the PENCOM is talking about, uh, you know, the examining the capital level of insurance in the country, in the insurance companies. So they are talking to them. There is a, from some form of audit going on as we speak. And I think they are going to come out with some kind of um, guidelines with respect to either raising the capital level or you know, prescribing some other form of accounting for the capitalization of these companies with, the, with respect to the level of risk, risk that they carry. Ex uh, exactly. New risk uh, uh, management uh, framework. Yes. Uh, very interesting. Let's start talking to some of these uh, uh, tables you, uh, you and your team uh, produced and, and, and brought along. Uh, this is very interesting. If you look at the size of, the, of our GDP uh, there, isn't it? At the top, then we're looking at the insurance uh, premium industry income. You look at the uh, penetration, and uh, nothing significant has changed. We're still less than half a percent. We are, and, and then we look at the density yes. all the way down. Uh, if you uh, break it down into uh, non life, life premium, and all of that, uh, I'm, I'm really worried down there. Third to the uh, third to the last, that's life penetration. Correct. That's 0 0.10 percent, which is which is materially low, and that is where we think. There's going to be an improvement. It is at two point six two dollars per capita. Exactly. Capital. So we, we spend. And that's how much our life is worth. It, exactly. So <laughs> that, that's of, that's how much. Insurance. That's how much we spend on life product in this country. So and each one of us. Each one of us. Just an average of two dollars. An average that's of about about three dollars. Right so about three sixty. About three sixty. So that means you, so our, our life insurance is less than my one thousand naira. Correct. I've got to see my insurance, uh, my, just to add more money to mine. So 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 it speaks to opportunity with respect to. If you take a look at what the other countries are doing, we have countries where penetra penetration, for instance, for life businesses are as high as like, um, you know, as high as like $22 in Russia. It is as high as $195 in Brazil, for example. So we believe that there is 
plenty headroom or substantial headroom for a catch-up for the country with respect to life insurance penetration in the Nigerian economy. And we believe strongly that the pension industry will be a lot instrumental to achieving to, this. To, cat to catalyze. To, to, exactly. But, but the key issue with insurance is it's just about the fact that they don't have as much money as the banks do have. And they wouldn't have as much money as the banks do have in as much as they are largely focused on the non-life segment of the market. Which are cars. Which are largely cars, oil and gas, mm -hmm. accident, fire policies, and all those other non-life policies that they underwrite. Nigeria broadly mirrors the entire African continent and also the oil exporters in the entire world with respect to their business structure in the insurance industry. Largely speaking, we focus more on non-life. 70% or thereabout is the, uh, the non-life businesses that Nigeria insurance uh, companies underwrite compared to about 30% for life. But in the entire world, it is close to about 56% life, which means in the entire world, people spend money to insure their lives more than they, they insure their properties. It is about 44% or thereabouts for non-life businesses. So that speaks to a possible kind of um, switch of our insurance business to, largely speaking, life insurance businesses versus non-life businesses in the long term. Why are the folks in the pension industry uh, interested in, in this space? Okay, so this is what has happened. The regulation in the industry allows for three kind of withdrawal system upon retirement. You could do like a lump sum, you could do programmed withdrawal of your pension benefits, and thirdly, you could do what is called a purchase of annuity you know, for life so that your, your retirement benefit is used to purchase annuity for life from an insurance company for you. Increasingly, we are seeing an improvement on that front. As at 2010, only 74 retirees were in the